So in this video, I wanna talk about my five top tips for hair care that really helps bring back the health of my hair again. Just to give you a little bit of a background, I dealt with hair loss, a receding hairline, just overall hair thinning about, started about four years ago. For me, it was an accumulation of not taking care of my hair over years and years and years that finally came to a head. It was really miserable and it was really a tough time. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what products to try or what to do about it. So I kind of went down the Google rabbit hole and started using hair loss products like Rogaine. I used Caviar Clinicals treatment as well as their hair loss shampoo. And all of them worked to some extent. But what ended up happening is that once I stopped using the product, my hair fell out again. I wasn't really addressing the root cause of the issue. I wasn't taking care of my hair. I wasn't taking care of my scalp. And I was just applying all these chemicals, hoping that something would work. So eventually I started shifting and exploring green hair care. And once I did that, things started to really get going and rebound for me when it came to my hair. So tip number one, which is so, so important, is to use green shampoo. Turning to green shampoos has helped so much because I think the sulfates in the shampoos that I was using before were really drying and stripping a lot of oil away from my hair, were weakening my strands and causing premature breakage. And I think that's why I was getting a receding hairline because when I was applying the shampoo, I would lather between my hands and then right away, the first spot that I was really heavily shampooing was right up here in my hairline where I was losing a lot of hair. Now, I've tried various ones in the marketplace and some are better than others. I'm gonna actually link up a blog post I did reviewing 10 different green shampoos, but I wanna talk about one that I'm currently using and have been loving. This one is by Ursa Nature. It uses aloe juice as its base, which I really love because then you're getting additional hydrating and nourishing components for your scalp and for your hair. The smell is fantastic too. It has a blend of like bergamot, sandalwood, licorice and ginger that give it this beautiful woodsy scent to it. I just love it so much. Number two comes to conditioner. Now for the longest time I only use conditioner about mid shaft and down. I have long hair and I felt like conditioners they weighed down my hair and so I never applied it around my roots because I felt like it made my hair oilier faster. That was fine for a while, but the thing is is that I was avoiding a whole section of my hair and not hydrating it. I like to take really hot showers. So imagine the shampoo is washing away the oil, the hot water is drying out the strands and my scalp, and then I'm leaving it and not applying any moisture to it. Of course I was getting dry, irritated, itchy scalp, and the health of my hair overall just wasn't great. Instead of using conditioner, what I use now is a leave-in conditioner spray. I really like this one by Pai Shu. What's great about it is that I can spray it all over my head, including at my roots, so all of my hair gets saturated, gets hydrated, but yet it doesn't weigh my hair down. So after I've sprayed in the leave-in conditioner, I also go back one more time with a serum spray. And I really like this one by Josh Rosebrook. This is actually the second product of his that I've tried, and it's phenomenal. It has a blend in it of oils, like marula, there's argan, there's camilla seed oil, baobab, oils that have a lot of antioxidants in them and a lot of nutrients to nourish the hair. And I like using this instead of an actual oil every day in my hair because if I'm not careful and I'm rushing, which I most of the time am, I'm always rushing as a mom, I put too much oil in my hair and then it just looks greasy and heavy and stringy and and I'm just like and sometimes I even have had to wash my hair again because I ended up putting way too much oil and it just got all greasy. This serum spray is a really nice option for me because I'm, I want something really quick and I want something to just nourish my hair every day. Now tip number three. When my hair was falling out and my hairline was receding, I also was dealing with a really itchy, flaky, dry scalp. It was a combination of three things, using drying shampoos, the really hot water, and not applying any hydrating ingredients near the crown of my head. So I turned to dandruff shampoos thinking, okay, this is a dandruff issue. I need to get rid of it stat because dandruff is kind of gross, but super common. And the dandruff shampoos didn't work. They actually dried out my hair and I feel it kind of made things worse. What I've discovered that works phenomenally well is using floral waters on my scalp. I just started treating my scalp like an extension of my face. 
figured, okay, I need to rebalance the pH after stripping it of the oils from the shampoo and using hot water. So I now use rose water or some kind of floral mist on my scalp after every time I wash once I get out of the shower. And I spray it down my part, then I part my hair, I spray again. And I do this all over my entire scalp, and then I massage it in. And what this does, in addition to rebalancing the pH, is the floral waters, like this one that I use by Tiffany Feather, which is organic rose water, it has anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, antibacterial properties that help to keep my scalp clean and balanced and hydrated and nourished, and it completely got rid of the flakes, the itchiness, and the irritated scalp. Now, my fourth tip that really made a huge difference in my hair is I stopped using aerosol dry shampoos. I'm sure a lot of you are moaning and groaning right now because you're like, Amy, how can I live without my aerosol dry shampoo? And I'm going to tell you how. The first thing you'll want to do is switch to a paste or a powder dry shampoo. And the reason is because when you use the aerosol can, first off, if you're like me, you're going through a can within like three or four uses because you're just spraying it all over to try to get it into your hair. So you're using way too much product and a lot of that product, it's just sitting on your scalp. It could be clogging your follicle pores and weakening them and damaging them and causing premature breakage. And I'm sure for myself that that was one of the issues and why I was having hair loss. So instead, what I do is I use on day one and day two post shampooing, I use dry shampoo paste. I can get super targeted with where you're applying it and so you only use a little bit. Like this is almost too much. Then you just rub it between your fingers and almost immediately it goes to a powder texture and then I can just target it where I need it. Like usually in the mornings, on day one and two post shampooing, I just have a little bit of oiliness around my face and maybe a little bit down my part and I just apply it to the areas I need it and that's it. And that's all the dry shampoo that I have to use and it keeps my hair looking really fresh. Then of course, there are the days where I need more dry shampoo than that. And when I can't use a paste, then I turn to powder dry shampoos. And I know a lot of people aren't fans of powder dry shampoos because the biggest complaint is, oh, well, it creates like a white cast in my hair. And yes, that is true. And it is possible to have that white cast. I definitely have had that sometimes when I've applied way too much dry shampoo. But I figured out a couple ways to get around that. And the first is by using this product by R & Co. I love their dry shampoo powder. It comes in this really nice pump bottle. So it sprays a really fine mist. But it just gives nice body and volume. The great thing about powder dry shampoos is that because the particle size is much thicker than aerosol dry shampoos, you're gonna get more volume, more body in your hair when you use it. And it's gonna absorb more oil because the particle is thicker, so you need less product. I also love this other one by Captain Blankenship, their mermaid dry shampoo. I don't love that it comes in the shaker can because you can't shake it on your head. You'll get way too much product in your hair. What I do instead is I shake it into my hands, then I rub it between my palms, and then I apply it with my hands. Now, this one's fantastic. It just smells divine. The founder of the Captain Blankenship products really takes a lot of care and focuses on the fragrance of her item. So that's one reason why I really love this dry shampoo. All right, now my last tip, and this is a super common one that I'm sure you hear all the time, but it's to avoid heat styling as much as you can. After I shampoo my hair in the evening, I towel dry it with my Aqua Hair Wrap and air dry it overnight. I never blow dry my hair anymore and this has helped so much to keep it strong and keep it healthy. I also avoid curly and irons and straighteners as much as possible. I almost never use them. For some of you are asking, okay, Amy, well, yeah, that's great, but what if I need a little bit of a wave? What if I need a little bit of texture to my hair? And I'm like, I am right there with you, girl, because I'm the same way. I want a little texture, I want a little body, and a little, a little, a little, a little beach hair, a little, a little something, something. And I achieve it by using salt sprays instead of using heat styling tools. I use this one by Captain Blankenship that I absolutely love. Not only does it smell fantastic from the Palma Rosa, but it has like a gold shimmer to it. I wore this in my hair at the Sephora event and I ran into a girlfriend and she was like, oh my God, from across the room, your hair is freaking glowing. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, do you have glitter in your hair? Like it just looks so pretty and golden. And I was like, that's my salt spray. So I love this one because it's just so pretty and it gives a nice lift and I usually use it kind of mid shaft and down and just spray it and then scrunch up my hair to get texture. So those are my five tips 
for increasing the health of your hair and your scalp and getting your best hair ever. I'm really happy to share with you guys what has worked for me. But again, like everybody's different. And so even though, you know, these tips and these products work really well for me, it may not work for others out there. You just have to kind of figure out what works best for you and figure out what's the root issue causing your hair loss and your thinning hairline. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching my channel. It's just been such a fun journey moving from blogger to Instagram or to now YouTube. And I'm so thankful to have you guys here checking out my videos. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I hope you'll click that subscribe button and notification so you'll be in the know for all the great content that comes out. And I'll see you guys next week with another video.